Hey everybody, it's Jeff Williams with the Four Seasons Sportsman. Today we're going to be out here doing some uh, catfishing uh, here on Grand Lake in northeast Oklahoma. And one of the things I wanted to show you how to do was catch shad. Now, um, what we're experiencing right now um, here on Grand Lake is a flood of the century almost. It's uh, the end of December. Well, this is actually New Year's Day 2016 and uh, we just had a tremendous flood here in northeast Oklahoma and, and uh, southwest Missouri and uh, we're going to be out trying to catch some wintertime blue catfish today but the first thing we have to do is try to catch some shad. Now I'm going to be using my Garmin equipment to locate shad and then I'm going to be throwing a shad net uh, on top of those fish or on top of where I think the shad are. I'm going to start the boat and I'm going to show you what I think the shad are. Now, listen to me on this tip, folks. Uh, we'll probably put this on the Team Catfish YouTube channel, too. In muddy water, it doesn't matter where you're at. When you get a flood, the majority of your fish are going to come to the top. They feel more comfortable in this muddy water. They're not going to be down nearly as deep as they are when it's clear. doesn't matter what season it is. When you get a flood, the fish are going to be a lot shallower than they are when the water's clear and during a normal normal condition so remember that now I had no idea when we put our boat in right here that we were gonna find shad right by the boat ramp and I still haven't caught any shad but I'm gonna go over here and throw my shad net we're gonna see if we can get some shad so we can get out here and try to do this fishing remember that tip in muddy water a lot of times your bait fish will be shallow and your game fish will be in shallower structure a lot of times too here we are on the color sonar, and here we are on the down, the Garmin down view. See when you see these big bright clouds right here? That's where your shad are the thickest, and that's where I'm going to throw the net. Try to get them right up on top of that. If you teach your kids how to run these boats, um, they can sure help you. When you're throwing a big shad net like I'm throwing, you want to make sure you always throw this big shad net with the wind folks you can't throw a big shad net against the wind you just cannot do it so have the have your kids or whoever's driving the boat circle the bait fish and then throw your net with the wind okay guys now if you're out here in the winter time please wear a life jacket when you're throwing for shad it's not a bad idea to wear a life jacket all the time but if you're throwing for shad the deck gets slick and you can fall in the water so easy. Put your life jacket on when this water's cold. Now, uh, I got my two boys. Hayden's running the camera. Oh, and my boy here, he's going to be helping me film today. He's going to be uh, helping me catch some fish. Let's see if you, let's see if they can put you on some shad right here. Let's get, let's get in here and see if we can find the shad. them on the color sonar too. Okay, I think they're getting a little thicker, aren't they? Mm -hmm. See if you can get that on the color sonar on the Garmin. Okay. All right, I'm going to throw the net. Put it in reverse. Stay neutral. Here we go. Not huge bait, but we got bait. Let's grab our uh, let's grab our big cooler. Open it up right there on the floor. I'm gonna dump them in there. These aren't great big shad that uh, I like to fish with, but you know what? We're getting a late start today, and uh, I'm real happy to get these because uh, the catfish will bite them. We'll just have to cut them up and put kind of chunk them up instead of 
instead of a uh, great big shed, we'll just chunk these up. Eat, sleep, catfish, hand towel. Simple, easy to use. You can clip it on your pants. I'm going to clip it on my little hook right there. You need an eat, sleep, catfish hand towel. You can wipe your nose, wipe your hands. And folks, this we're in the uh, G3 Sportsman 200 today. And it's got a great uh, anchor storage. Or you can put your cast nets, your shad nets up here. Up in the front well. I'll take my shad net. This is a tool, folks. Put it up just like a tool. Wrap them up. Drop it down in there. Put your rope on top of it. And you'll be ready to go the next time you're ready to go catch some shad. Everybody, we headed out onto the lake. It was a little bit cool. And uh, we were had to have to search down these fish. We had about four hours to uh, get all rigged up, get our bait cut up, find some fish. Try to get this little video done. My uh, oldest son, Hayden's the one running the video camera, and they did a fantastic job. Owen was great help uh, out in the boat. And uh, we uh, did a lot of searching. I had to stop a couple places uh, before we finally found our fish. We found them in about 12 foot of water on a big uh, mud flat, and uh, we anchored a couple places that uh, historically are really good this time of year in deep water, but the catfish just were not there so uh, folks always remember if they're not shallow they're deep and if they're not deep they're shallow those are wise words from my good friend Jerry Croft which you've seen in this video or in these videos many times okay fish one not a big catfish but <laughs> He is a catfish. I always like to bite the ones right where you have to stare right into the sun. A little nice blue cat. That's a great one to take home to the house. Take that on. Do that. Now that's not a big catfish, but you know what? That is a catfish. We got him out here on January 1st. That we're in 12 foot of water now we just pulled up to some of these old bushes these flooded trees and uh, we've had a lot of bites but i think a lot of them are channel cats a lot of times your channel cats will peck peck yank yank peck peck yank yank and and this little blue right here he just swam off and grabbed it and swam off so we're going to put another uh, hunk of shad out there and see if something bigger comes along I think he's coming at you, oh, real. Just keep reeling till I tell you. I think you I think he just brought it at us, bud. I don't think we got him. Reel it up, we'll get us a fresh bait out. You don't have any of this in your boat. You really need to. This is a brand new bottle. I just used my other bottle all up. Turns that old bait. Nice and bloody again. Put some scent on it. We're going to cast it out there and fish with it again. Got him, O. Uh -huh. Now that was a good strike. Wham! Man, that old blue cat just chomped her down. Now this kid, if you didn't know any better, he, he, he acts like he kind of likes this catfishing. Wee! I think we might have found something here up in these flooded trees. Nice blue cat. Sweet! He's a little bigger than the other one, though. He hit a big old shad head. Awesome. That's fun, man. That fish just pounded it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, that kid's got his mouth full of jerky. He can't even talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yeah, about a three or four pounder. He, uh, nice catfish. Boy, I tell you what, you know, a lot of people wonder why these fish turn colors. Well, when this water's muddy, the fish's natural camouflage is to turn pale because there's no, uh, there's no light penetration in this muddy water. If you would have caught this fish in clear water in about 12 foot, his back would be slate blue and his bottom, his body or bottom belly would be, uh, would be white or light colored. But when they're up here in this shallow muddy water, they turn pale like that. A lot of people call them white cats, but they are blue catfish and we got a lot of them here on Grand Lake. We're not blessed with just lots and lots of big fish, but we got a lot of fish that are fun to come out here and catch and they're fun to go home and eat. So uh, we got a 15 fish limit here. And uh, if I was in the mood to clean fish tonight, we'd be having catfish sandwiches tomorrow. Down he goes, let's get a baited out there. Get it going again, oh, you gonna cut me another bait? I could handle a few more hits like that. Man, he just waylaid that thing. Well, he's not Moby Dick, but he's a catfish. Squeaker. Okay. Yeah, that's a, another good eating blue catfish. Just another little guy. Mouth full of shad, and that fish was coming at us. You've seen. You've seen me uh, reel up there and hook those fish. What I'm doing with our double action catfish hooks is I like to reel down and hook set those fish rather than stand up and try to catch them. And what you do when you do that is you don't, uh, you don't jerk your bait off. So if I don't catch the fish, I can put the bait back on there and, uh, or I don't pull the bait off when I stand up and hook. Reel, 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 reel. The rod loads up, and when it loads up, you put about two more good turns on them. And these good, uh, this is an 8 aught double action right here. Uh, they will get them. Bingo. These Thundercats got a real soft tip on them. And if you learn how to watch them, you learn, how to, you learn to see that fish kind of pulling against that. He just picked it up again, or he's moving. Real down, get him, oh, I think he's there. I think he's coming at us. Get him? Yeah. All right. I think that fish was coming at us. Sometimes when they don't pull the rod over and they just come at you, they're just pull. They're just pulling that line through that sinker slide. You got to really watch what's going on. He's a little bigger. Is he? Yeah. Good. Oh yeah, nice cat, oh. All right. Ooh, right there. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that mean fat trap. Hooked in the bottom jaw. There we go. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. 
There's nothing in the world wrong with that. He's that's a little a, bigger too. Is he bigger too? Not bigger than that. I don't know. That's what that I'm one. talking about. We'll just uh, put him in the water with the fish grip and keep, keep it on him. Show him who's the boss, boy. You got the power. Okay, watch the anchor rope back here. That's okay. That's what happens sometimes when you're fishing with a bunch of bunch of rods out. Especially when you're not paying attention to them and fish yet. Alright, let's get him up here. Here, here. Boy, if you don't have any fish grips, you don't know what you're missing. That was the one we just sprayed the dead red back on, I think, threw it back out there. So, sweet. Couple nice catfish just bam, bam. How about that? All right, let's put this back in the drift, master. I think we've got a small catfish bringing a line in, like I was talking about not too long ago. Sometimes out here they don't always pull the rod, pull it away, and pull, you know, really pull it hard. So I'm going to keep, keep, I've been kind of watching this one. I've been reeling the slack up little by little, and he just, the slack just keeps coming in. So uh, there's an, he's just moved it again. Let's see if I can catch up to him. There he was. He was just coming at us. I just kept picking that slack up little by little. It's time to play. That's what old Fat Albert used to say. <laughs> I just missed one right there. Man, that is some fun stuff. My old buddy Scott Turnage always says, if you don't like that, you're a hard person to please, and I'd have to agree. Man, that's a nice cat, isn't it? Uh-huh. Well, I tell you what, we're just having us a fine day. It took me a couple places to... Uh, uh, we had to stop a couple places and I finally marked some fish up here about 12 foot of water on the Garmin and uh, they were here. Uh, we haven't been here that long and caught, I don't know, six or eight fish already and had a, had a nice double so we're going to cut this one loose and cast it back out there. Alright, Mr. Blue Cat. Down he goes. No, oh, see ya. See you when you weigh about 80. Uh, oh, we've had a good day, haven't we? Uh-huh. Now, when you see a boy smiling like this, you know that they like to come out here and catfish. And uh, we came out here on January 1st, 2016, and uh, we hooked up on some blues, didn't we? Uh-huh. Has any, any kid come out here and do this, you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they, they, they would like to, wouldn't they? Hey, uh, everybody, take a kid fishing, and thanks again for watching the Four Seasons Sportsman.